Alright, so this is part two of my little attempt to reassemble and make my G0704 not suck so bad. Uh, what I'm doing here right now is working on the Y-axis lead screw and bearing assembly and coupling. Now, I made all of my CNC conversion stuff just based off of stuff I saw on a mix of just searching stuff on Google, YouTube, uh, there's a couple different people doing stuff. You can look at um, Haas uh, Machine, there's a guy uh, like Ballistic, something on YouTube. They have some really good stuff. Um, I just basically kind of went off their ideas and then just kind of winging it, basically. Um, so I have here on the y-axis, here's the original block. I added the, basically, this is a spacer that people are doing that helps you bring off the bracket that will hold the actual motors in place that has to help it stand off away so that the actual uh, carriage here will not slam into the end of it. The coupling I just made out of um, a one inch diameter um, aluminum bar stock just figured out uh, obviously drill it out to the size of your stepper motor and then figure out the size of the shaft of the lead screw here and then just threw a whole mess of um, set screws on there. I kind of went a little overboard. Started out trying to be just simple with two on the lead screw side and then two on the stepper and then I just started adding them randomly. Uh, so what I've kind of noticed is the way I did it is kind of stupid because it basically makes it so this shaft is a little bit crooked unless you're really careful. And the way, way I was doing it and when I was assembling it was leaving this all on and bolting this, all this, everything together on the machine and then putting the coupling on afterwards but I realized I really wasn't getting it how I wanted it because you need to make sure you take out any slop there would be within the bearing. Now there's a bearing on the back side here and then there's another bearing on the front side of it so I've got to take that apart just so I can show it because i got to take it apart anyways might as well do it now. Alright now we got a big old pile of parts so here's the original bearing block from the machine um, Kind of see, kind of crappy looking. Obviously, you remember we're only paying for such high quality. The lead screw. Now, can't see too much here, but I've actually cut a little bit off of the threads here from where the handle connects. Uh, that's really you could. You don't have to do that if you custom make this all to your design. Um, you know, if you just have to make the coupling a lot longer. A lot of people buy couplings. I just figured I have a lathe. I have a mill. Hey. Why am I going to pay $40, $50 for a nice coupling? I'll just make a crappy one and take hours to make it. Uh, this is again the standoff block. It's just a big block of aluminum. Start out with a one inch thick block. And then you have the two bearings. There's the inner and outer. And then again, my coupling. Again, there's a whole mess of screws. These are um, 1024. And then I got some 632, I believe which actually fits into the little groove in the end of the lead screw. So you can actually kind of get in there and lock it into place so it won't rotate around. Whether or not that was the best idea I've been doing, I don't know, but it seemed to be working pretty good. I'm really just kind of doing this all to make the machine work a little bit better. So I'm just going to put that all back together again, just throw a little extra grease in here just to go pose to that uh, nice crappy grease the machine came with and then I'll start attaching it all back to the machine. Alright next step back to the machine so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy here and this guy here which is the I guess the lead screw nut ugly machine block apparatus. Uh, this goes back in here in this slot basically what you have to do is you're going to probably want to put it with the adjustment screws on that way so allegedly you could get your fingers in here and adjust it but you're going to put it in here and then move this guy around and then try to get it up where you can grab it with the set screws here so I'll just do that uh, real quick because no one wants to see me fumbling around doing that alright so all I did now was just go ahead and uh, stuck that guy in there I'm going to go ahead and push the uh, Y carriage back in there and then just what I'm going to do is put a little bit of grease on the end of this so it'll kind of work its way through the um, the nut because there's basically no grease on there to begin with 
So, yeah. I'm just using white lithium grease. Uh, is it the best idea? Again, I have no idea. But I don't know what I'm doing anyways. So what can it hurt? So just going to spread that on there a little bit. Plus I have a giant tube of it. So what the hell? Nothing's really in a, in a very good alignment right now, so it's really just a matter of just getting it on there. Um, go ahead and get that in there. Alright, now I've got the whole lead screw bracket and all this junk just kind of snug down here. Uh, basically all I do is just go ahead and leave this here, tighten, screw this all the way in uh, counterclockwise until it snugs itself up against the actual base of the machine and then I just went ahead and just put the screws in. Uh, I left this, this is actually an M6 um, bolt in here um, I just kept it with it. I could have just drilled it out and tapped it to a different size but I had an M6 tap lying around and some M6 bolts so I figured if it's working why change it so what I'm going to do now is just take a little level and just level out all these because there's a little bit of wiggle in here, a lot of um, free play. So I want it nice because I don't want to take it apart again for a while. So I'll go ahead and uh, just level it out. All right, now I got the stepper all connected. I got uh, everything tightened down on the coupling, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I got the, all that loud noise is my horrendously loud CNC computer and my stepper motor power source it is really not in an enclosure so it is incredibly loud um, so what I'm going to do now before I turn anything since this nut is really not in the right spot it's just jammed in there I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the set screws just a little bit it'll be able to kind of float back and forth and so the actual lead screw can kind of guide it into the right spot so let me do that first so I don't start ripping everything apart just dropped out a whole bunch. So I'm just going to jog the Y back and forth. This is at, I believe, 40 inches a minute. So I'm just going to let that uh, thing find its own natural home and then kind of snug it down and see how it sounds and how it reacts. It's much better than it was before I rebuilt it. It was making like a nice shuddering, jarring sound every time you would switch directions. And it was only letting me go up to 40 inches a minute. Let me try making a quick change here. I'm just going to bump it up to 50 on the rapid. It runs fine. It was causing so much drag that it was actually skipping at um, anything over 40 inches a minute, which is pretty ridiculous because there should be plenty of room for this. So that actually works really, really well, better than the time I tried it beforehand. So I'm just going to tighten those all the way down so they don't loosen up. Make sure I didn't do anything bad. Let's try 60 just for kicks. And it turns out I'm not paying attention and I'm only changing the x-axis which we're not using. So let's go back to the y. Now this is 50. Yeah, it's skipping. So there's just too much drag in there with the lead screw. So all that baloney I said about the 50 inches a minute working, not true. So I knew it didn't seem different. So I don't know. So going back to 40 inches a minute, which is good enough for me. 
And there's a little bit, of, need a little bit more grease on that uh, lead screw. So I'm just going to go ahead and grease that and see how it performs after that. Alright, so I got everything locked down, put all the other bolts in, readjusted it. Seems to work pretty good. I, I'm happier with it. It's not perfect. Um, I know kind of after really looking at it this way, I'd probably be better off having some sort of flexible coupling or a split coupling. But right now, I don't have any money to actually buy one. So I need to make something and make some money so I can buy them. Uh, anyways, what I will do in the future is kind of go over the steppers and all my controllers and all the setup and everything or as far as what works for me. Um, and I don't really know what I'm doing, but it seems to work. I've made some parts. I made all these things on the machine. Uh, if you got any suggestions, let me know. I will try to learn as I'm going and make it better.